Retro Days. As I flipped through some past show notes, I discovered a line I jotted down while filming the 80s fan club episode. It read, remind the keyboard monkey to write a script about telephone hotlines of the 80s and 90s. So I quickly wrapped the note in an old banana peel and chucked it at our writer's head. After trying to eat the note for several minutes, Tony finally read it and agreed saying, script now, banana later? It's the fastest he's ever written an episode. So get your parents' permission and call us at 1-900-RETRO-DAYS. It's only $2 for the first minute and 99 cents for each additional minute. Before 1-900 hotlines flooded the airwaves, the first use of the service was for a program called Ask the President in 1977. Calls came into a nationwide radio talk show hosted by Walter Cronkite for the purpose of asking the newly elected president, Jimmy Carter, a series of questions about his upcoming term. However, some disagree with this usage as being the first for 900 numbers. According to Richard Leonard in his article, A Brief History of 1900 Premium Telephone Numbers, the official position is that the earlier uses of the number were ad hoc and that the restructuring carried out by AT&T in 1980 officially flagged off the technology. In that case, the first use was in 1980, when viewers of the presidential debate between Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan could call in and vote for who they thought won the debate. The voting was done based on which of the two different phone numbers you called, one for Carter and one for Reagan. In those early years of the service, which could include other prefixes like 976, the hotlines were limited by technology and offered no interaction. In a pre-internet world, hotlines were simply a means for people to acquire information. Callers could get scores from sporting events, tour dates for their favorite musicians, stock information, theater information, and more. But even early on, the service was a clear success, racking up 10.9 million calls during the first full year of service in 1981. By 1987, AT&T made it possible for the information providers to profit from these telephone numbers, allowing anyone with an idea to gain access to their own 900 number. In this new, under-regulated Wild West of phone hotlines, the gold was mined enthusiastically, leading to 1-900 numbers for seemingly every interest. Of the many niche categories, horror hotlines became especially popular among young teens, having recently discovered the midnight movies on WPIX or their equivalent. During a time when Freddy and Jason were as popular as any boy band, hotlines were a way to hear scary stories, laugh at twisted jokes, converse with the undead, and interact with horror icons. Once again, foolish friends, Freddy Krueger is on your phone. Dial this number now. I've got some tales to tell. Freddy's favorite bedtime stories. <laughs> Dead time stories. All brand new and straight from my boiler room to your home. It's Freddy Krueger on your phone. So dial this number now if you dare. Tell him Freddy sent you. $2 the first minute, 45 cents each additional minute. Children, get your parents' permission before you dial. Entrepreneurs took full advantage of the Nightmare on Elm Street craze because there were at least three different phone numbers you could call, each with their own commercial and gimmick. In 1987, the phone number was 1-900-660-FRED. In the commercial, Freddy tells you to prepare to be scared and later says, join the Freddy fan club, though never elaborates on how this is done. Instead, he ends by teasing, Freddy Krueger has a special message just for you. A year later, in 1988, you could have called 1-900-909-FRED for a chance to speak with Freddy live if you were one of the lucky, randomly chosen callers. It's unclear what would have happened if you weren't chosen, but you were probably treated to a pre-recorded selection from Freddy. If you called 1-900-8604-FRED in 1989, you were challenged with Nightmare on Elm Street trivia for a chance to win $10,000 or a role in the next movie. Of course, if you weren't a Freddy fan, there were plenty of other horror options available. The night holds terror too horrible to be seen. From out of the shadows, something's coming. Do you think you're really safe? 
All alone in your nice, warm house? <laughs> well, look outside. It's at your door. And it's coming to take you away on a journey into terror. The commercial for 1-900-660-UGLY is reminiscent of the old spooky soundtrack commercials that would promise frights in the vaguest way possible. Similarly, the voice over here promises a journey into terror without precisely explaining what that means. Are we going to get a scary story? Spooky sounds? A live operator interacting with you? Someone on the other end screaming booga booga and hanging up? We just don't know. The list of horror hotlines is so long, we could easily do a standalone video, so we'll save some for next Halloween. Meanwhile, poor mute Jason Voorhees has no hotlines at all. Poor guy. If corporations could use cartoons as a sales tool for action figures, you darn well better believe they were cashing in on the hotline gold rush. He -Man. I am He-Man. Call She-Ra and me at 1-900-909-2233. We'll journey to distant worlds, explore the universe. And probably battle Skeletor along the way, huh? Probably, Orko. There's a new adventure every day. We'll also tell you how to get an action figure or this colorful poster. Part of your $2.35 two-minute call will go to local science museums. Get your parents' permission and call 1-900-909-2233. I have the power! He-Man and the Masters of the Universe was the first cartoon to advertise a toy line, and they were an early adopter of the 1-900 craze as well. You have to wonder just how much of your $2.35 call actually went to local science museums. Hey, I'm not calling She-Ra a liar or anything, but that vague language definitely leaves plenty of wiggle room. Besides, it's not like old He-Man was the only one taking advantage of the profitable 1-900 service. That's right, even the Smurfs were getting in on that sweet, sweet hotline action. Uh, <clears throat> uh, mm. Callers got to hear an exciting Smurf adventure while calling in, and like the He-Man phone call, proceeds from this one also went to a charity. Curiously, a lot of these commercials mentioned that the calls would clue kids into how they could get a toy without going into too much detail in the commercial itself, leaving me to speculate that there had to be an extra hidden cost. One commercial that actually reveals they'll give callers a free gift is for the Popeye hotline. They explain that callers are invited to celebrate Popeye's birthday and listen to one of their adventures to boot. For every normal hotline, there were phone numbers set up for baffling topics. One of the absolute weirdest was 1-900-9099-CRY. What makes people all over America break down and cry like this? Call 1-900-9099-CRY and hear it for yourself. $2 for the first minute, 45 cents each additional minute. If you're under 18, ask your parents before you call. 1-900-9099-CRY. I don't know who was calling this phone number or why, but I'm willing to bet the owners of this number probably made a good amount of money on their peculiar premise. The entire thing seems to hinge upon the mystery of what can they possibly say to cause you to cry? Some called to find out, others may have called to see if they could listen without crying, while others may have called with the express purpose of turning on the waterworks for a therapeutic release. But maybe you don't want to cry. Maybe you want to get angry. Dial an insult was a number you could call to, you guessed it, get insulted. I particularly love how this one explains plainly, are you having a bad day? Well, it's about to get worse. No matter how you feel about the premise, you've got to admit, that's one catchy tune. Another hilariously peculiar one was 1-900-909-ELVIS, which promised to offer proof that Elvis was still alive. Is Elvis alive? Judge for yourself by calling the 900 number on your television screen. Hear what could be the incredible Elvis phone call. 
Listen to the newest and longest recording ever, just released from the original taped conversation purportedly of Elvis recorded about four years after the 16th of August, 1977. Call 1-900-909-ELVIS. Call now. Experience what may be the most shocking story of our time. Who could resist hearing the totally real and legitimate taped conversations that absolutely proved Elvis faked his death? This is groundbreaking stuff, people. And then there was whatever the heck this is. It's the Freak Phone. And here's the party freak. Friday Freaker. Dancing new sensation. Grabbing the nation. Doing the freak. Call now. 1-900-490-FREAK. Join the party. The fast and easy way. To hear what's scamming from New York to L.A. Call now. 1-900-4903 What's happening, what's jamming? Party till you drop Dial and hear the action What's hot and what's not? Call now 1-900-4903 Two dollars a call before Cameo, the popular website where you could request personalized videos from your favorite stars, one of the few ways to contact celebrities from home was if they had their own hotline. Lucky for you, there were plenty to choose from. Guess what? Corey Haim and Corey Feldman are giving out their personal numbers. If you call 1-900-909-3700, you can listen to their private phone messages and get their personal number where you can leave them a message of your own. $2 the first minute, 45 cents each additional minute. Ask your parents before you call. 1-900-909-3700. If you call me right now, I'll give you my private number. Um, you call that number and you'll hear a recording and I'll give you my personal number if you call that. Um, and we'll wrap. Honestly, this one would have felt right at home in the weird hotline category as well. There's something particularly voyeuristic about the whole concept. While I don't believe for a second callers were being given access to the Corey's actual phone messages, it just seems like a weird thing to offer up for a hotline. Of course, the promise of their personal phone numbers was the real draw. Confusingly, in the commercial, Corey Haim mentions calling the number so you can rap, insinuating you'd actually get to talk to him, while elsewhere in the commercial they say you can only leave messages for them. And the Coreys weren't the only ones getting in on the hotline action. There were 1-900 numbers for the Fresh Prince and DJ Jazzy Jeff, Jose Canseco, Tiffany, New Kids on the Block, Kiss, Warrant, Hulk Hogan, Paula Abdul, and, well, the list goes on. The biggest celebrity to have his own hotline was Santa Claus. Only, wait, why are there so many different phone numbers for Santa? <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. Santa here. Call 1-900-660-6666. North Pole, Santa Claus species. Call Santa at home. Dial 1-976-8888. Oh, oh, this is Santa Claus. Your child can visit with Santa for only 49 cents a minute. They can tell Santa what they want for Christmas, then hear their own voice repeat the Christmas wish list. Christmas is near, and I am delighted that so many good boys and girls are calling my special number. Well, Christmas word without a Santa stack. Now one, now hundred, now zero, now rap. There's a new story every day, and I'll tell you how to get a free Christmas gift. I don't understand. There's only one real Santa, obviously, so why would he have so many commercials? And why does he look so different in all of them? I'm going to need a minute here to take my mind off of this crisis of faith. Oh, you startled me. I was just on the phone with a special friend. He calls often, but sometimes it gets, well, you know. I have lots of special friends. Do you need someone to get close to? It's really simple. Jot down my number. You better hurry before my line gets busy again. I'll be waiting for you. Four ninety nine per minute, adults only. Hmm. What? Santa who? Oh, <laughs> the most pervasive of the hotline numbers were the ones advertising, let's say, intimate conversations. The majority of these promised live women on the other end of the line, waiting for you to <clears throat> pick up the phone. According to Michael Kaplan in a New York Post article, at the peak, there were 500 or 600 people working out of a converted Toys R Us warehouse in Miami. On a busy Friday night, the biggest operation, American Telnet, could rake in as much as $2 million. The business itself was a billion-dollar industry and one that was pervasive enough to blanket late-night television with commercials and newspapers with print ads. Men of a certain age no doubt remember these ads and perhaps even giddily called one of the numbers to listen to the pre-recorded message 
only to hang up before any payments were required. After ABC's 2020 reported on the booming business, government agencies and religious activists took notice and fought to stop the hotlines. American Telnet, along with other operations in this category, amended their business models to try and stay ahead of the new restrictions, but by 2002, they shut their doors, citing the internet as one of the many nails in their coffin. 1-900 numbers were such a huge business that we had to leave off many notable commercials from today's list as much as we wanted to highlight your personal horoscope reading and bizarre UFO sightings. <laughs> it seemed like every day there were new hotline commercials airing between our favorite television shows, and each one offered something unique. Which commercials do you remember watching as a kid? Did you ever call any? I'd love to hear about it down in the comments, and if you enjoy our content, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and maybe even activating that ubiquitous notification bell. It really does make a huge difference. Let's meet again next week to celebrate yesteryear, right here on Retro Days. Clicky, clicky.